Well, it may have taken over 500 days, but the stock market has finally reached a new all-time high. So, is this cause for celebration or concern? Today, we'll break down the data surrounding such all-time highs. More importantly, we'll explore the 4,800 level, discussing options and the dark pool liquidity that has been flowing through the markets. We'll analyze which markets led this rally, identify those breaking out, and pinpoint the ones that appear weak. Join us as we break them all down together. And of course, we can't forget about crypto. It was a buy the rumor, sell the facts situation for the ETF. But will it worsen as we observe what seems like Wyckoff distribution? Join us as we cover stocks, commodities, and cryptos for the week ahead. Welcome back, everyone, to The Daily Show. I'm K2, and if you love markets like we do, remember to subscribe and smash that like button. Now, on to the latest market update. The S&P 500 has just hit a new all-time high, surpassing the previous record set in January 2022. The benchmark index has experienced a remarkable 23% increase over the past 12 months. Despite initial expectations for a significant correction, following the strong end-of-year rally in 2023. We find ourselves breaking out to new highs. This kind of price action typically isn't indicative of a bear market or an imminent recession. If SPX, S&P 500, is correct, then TLT, iShares 20-plus year Treasury bond ETF, is expected to catch up. This could initiate a catch-up trade in IWM, Russell 2000 ETF, and lead to a rebound in low-quality and unprofitable company stocks. On the other hand, if TLT is correct, then it might be a trap. In this case, technology stocks could experience selling pressure, while healthcare may resume its leadership position. Fi, this has largely gone unnoticed, but Treasuries and NASDAQ stocks are now back to being positively correlated since mid-2023. That's exactly what we experienced in 2022, when fixed income instruments severely declined in tandem with U.S. equities. It is important to note that during a brief period around the ChatGPT release and the AI craze, these two markets moved in opposite directions for approximately six months. As inflation potentially re-emerges and the government continues to grapple with a severe deficit funding problem, there is a likelihood of upward pressure on long-term yields, potentially impacting U.S. stocks this year. Let's not overlook the fact that an unprecedented $8.2 trillion of outstanding treasuries will need to be reissued in the next 12 months. A 1724 update. The bullish percent index, BPI, developed by Abe Cohen in the 1950s, serves as a breadth indicator based on the number of stocks providing point and figure buy signals. This indicator offers insights into the market's health, signaling overbought or oversold conditions. When the bullish percent index surpasses 70%, it indicates an overbought market while a reading below 30% suggests oversold conditions. It's important to note that, like other overbought indicators, it may not always reach extreme highs or lows. In 2022 and 2023, the BPI exceeded 70% six times, highlighted in red circles, excluding the recent peak at the end of December. Notably, each occurrence coincided with market peaks, indicated by red lines. As of 11724, the BPI closed at 69.80, highlighted in a purple circle, down from 72.20 on 116.24, triggering a sell signal today. A BPI sell signal occurs when the index rises above 70 and subsequently retraces below this threshold. The accompanying chart illustrates the S&P 500's lower chart, indicating that the October uptrend broke at the end of December, shown by the pink line. Despite this, the S&P 500's support holds at 4,600. It's important to remember that past performance does not guarantee future results. The large cap benchmark, S&P 500 Index, SPX, concluded at 4,839 on Friday, surpassing the previous record close of 4,696 set on January 3, 2022. Additionally, the index reached an intraday high of 4,142, surpassing the prior intraday record of 4,118 set on January 4, 2022. According to FactSet data, this development follows a period of volatility at the beginning of the year, attributed by analysts to a renewed increase in Treasury yields and uncertainty surrounding a potential March interest rate adjustment, 
by the Federal Reserve. Friday's achievement also marked the end of a 5-12 trading day stretch without a new record closing high for the S&P 500, concluding the longest such period since the 1-375 trading day streak from October 2007 to March 2013. According to Dow Jones market data, final S&P 500 stocks, weekly heat map, NVIDIA is up, slight 0.5%, Meta is up, plus 3.7%, Microsoft is up, plus 3.6%, Alphabet is up, he, plus 3%, Amazon is up, plus 0.1%, Apple is up, plus 3.2%, Tesla is down, 6.6%, Technology sector led the week's climb with a 4.3% increase. Communication services followed with a 1.9% rise. Other gainers included financials, consumer discretionary, and industrials. Sector performances, technology sector gainers, advanced micro devices, plus 19% Western Digital, WDC, plus a 9.5% applied materials, a mat, plus 11% communication services, Walt Disney, DIS, rose 3.0%, declining sectors, Utilities fell 3.7%. Energy saw a 3.1% drop. Real estate experienced a 2.1% decline. Other sectors with declines. Materials, consumer staples, healthcare. Companies scheduled for next week. United Airlines Holdings, Johnson & Johnson. Procter & Gamble, Netflix, Tesla. Abbott Laboratories, International Business Machines. Verizon Communications, AT&T, Visa, Intel, Union Pacific American Express, Colgate Palmolive. Summary of U.S. December Retail Sales Report U.S. retail sales came in much stronger than expected, as American consumers remain resilient in the face of higher interest rates. Retail sales rose 0.6% on the month, better than expectations for an increase of 0.4%. After stripping out the auto and gas categories, core retail sales rose 0.4%, compared to expectations for a gain of 0.2%. Key Takeaway Strong consumer spending is bad news for the Federal Reserve and confounds the case for the Fed to cut rates in 2024. What does the Fed do now? The New York Fed Empire State Manufacturing Survey just suffered the biggest two-month collapse ex-COVID in history. Things are even worse than they were in 2008-09. What does the Fed do now? And what does this mean for the consensus view? That a soft landing is possible. All right. Let's delve into some charts, starting with the SPY 4-hour chart. Wow, new all-time high. What could go wrong? Bullish scenario. In my bullish scenario, if we retest to 47C785, there's potential for further upward movement, possibly reaching around 490. Bearish scenario. On the flip side, my bearish scenario suggests we might pull back all the way to 475, retesting the trend line. If it doesn't hold, that's something to consider and a potential win for bears. Now let's shift our focus to the QQ chart, which is still showing strength for the short term. Here are two bullish and bearish scenarios. Bullish scenarios for QQ, pull back to 413 and return to all-time high. In a bullish scenario, we might experience a pullback to around 413 and subsequently see a climb back to the all-time high. The timing of this move could be influenced by the earnings reports of Tesla and Netflix. Bearish Scenarios for QQQ On the bearish side, there's a possibility of a retracement to the trend line, touching down around 404. However, from there, we might see a bounce and a move higher again. Remember, these scenarios depend on various factors, including earnings reports and broader market conditions. Taking a look at the Tesla 4-hour chart, it appears to be oversold, setting the stage for a potential gap up on Monday and a continuation through Wednesday aligning with Tesla's earnings. Bullish scenario. In the bullish scenario, there's potential for an upside move with the price reaching around 227. This could be fueled by positive momentum generated by the earnings report. Bearish scenario. On the flip side, the downside target could be around 193. It's essential to keep a close eye on the market dynamics and Tesla's earnings report as they play a crucial role in determining the direction of the stock. Examining the Apple 4-hour chart, it's noteworthy that the previous gap has been filled. As long as the price remains above 191, there appears to be potential for more upside in Apple. Bullish Scenario In a bullish scenario, if the price continues to stay above 191, the outlook suggests further upside. 
it's essential to monitor the price action and any potential positive catalysts. Bearish scenario. On the downside, if the price drops below 190, there's a downside target of 187 and 185. It's crucial to watch for key support levels and market dynamics to assess the likelihood of a bearish move. When we zoom in on the Bitcoin chart, there's still some uncertainty regarding the 41K demand area. It seems we might not have decisively broken it. Anticipated bounce scenario. I'm inclined to expect at least one more bounce from Bitcoin at this level. A decent bounce could be in the cards, potentially leading us to a target of 44K. In the case of a more aggressive bounce from the bulls, we might see a retest of 45.8K. Key levels, demand area, 41K, target on bounce, 44K, aggressive target, 45.8K. The upcoming week holds several key events that could impact the market. On Monday and Tuesday, no significant news is expected. However, Thursday is packed with important releases, including core durable goods orders, GDP, initial jobless claims, and new home sales. As the week concludes on Friday, keep an eye on the core PCE index and PCE price index. Feel free to drop any questions you might have in the comments below. I'll do my best to respond promptly. If you find value in this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.